Uh, hello everybody, my name is Dick Kennedy. I'm sorry I can't be with you in person because at the moment I'm away in Borneo of all places at the World Conference on Science Education. I'm delighted to speak to career guidance teachers because prior to coming to UCC I spent 23 wonderful years teaching in secondary school level and I met some wonderful uh, career guidance teachers and it was a pleasure to work with them. And what I want to do now is to bring you through our new BSc in Science Education that we have here in UCC. And if I could ask you please to look at the first slide. Now, the BSc in Science Education is being updated as a result of the Teaching Council. We have had a BSc in Education in the Physical Sciences accredited by the Teaching Council as far back as 2001. We set it up basically because we found that the traditional professional diploma in education route, or the higher diploma in education route as it used to be called, was not providing schools with sufficient physics and chemistry teachers. So it was set up to sort of correct that balance, if you like. So in UCC, we still have both models but I want to speak to you today about this four-year concurrent degree. Now, we've changed the name of the degree as and from this year in the college calendar. It is now called the Bachelor in Science Education degree. And we've made another change to it, and that is we've incorporated a biology stream. Now, why have we made these changes? These changes have been brought about as a result of the Teaching Council document that you see on the screen there in front of you. That was published by the Teaching Council in 2011. And in that Teaching Council document, they spelled out a model for how future teacher training is going to be carried out in Ireland. For the concurrent model of teacher education, as you can see there from the table, They've divided the time into 50% of the subject discipline, 25% of foundation studies, 25% of school placement, giving a total of 100% or 240 ECTS credits. Now, as you're probably aware, everything at university is counted in ECTS credits. ECTS standing for European Credit Transfer and Accumulation System. So what we have to ensure in devising our new model is to make sure that the students had 120 credits over the four years of the subject discipline, 60%, of, 60 credits of the foundation studies and 60 credits of school placement. As I go through the structure of the degree, I will show you how all of these criteria are satisfied and hence we got full form and recognition from the Teaching Council because we satisfy their criteria. Now, for somebody to be a qualified science teacher, i.e. recognised by the Teaching Council, there are two basic requirements. The first requirement is that the students must have accumulated 60 ECTS credits in the specialist subject, that is either physics or chemistry or biology. And they must have these 60 credits between first year, second year and third year. So they must have the subject to degree level, if you like. Now, most BSc degrees are, of course, four years. So if part of this 60 credits goes into four years, that is what goes into fourth year, that is perfect. In addition, in order for a teacher to be recognised to teach junior certificate science, they must also have 10 credits in each of physics, chemistry and biology. Now that's a completely new regulation. It never existed before. In the past, in the teaching council, if you were recognised to teach leaving cert chemistry or physics or biology, you would be automatically recognised to teach junior certificate science, not any more, unless you have the credits in each of those three subjects there. Now, you may be aware that the Highland Report in 2011, where Anya Highland took a broad overview of teacher training, she recommended a lot of 
uh, importance on having a common first year entry. We have always had this common first year entry. In other words, students don't have to make up their mind about a career in science teaching until the beginning of second year. Now, as a secondary school teacher myself, I fully realise that many students don't know what they want to do. They might like science, but they may not be quite clear on whether they want to have a career as a scientist or a career as a science teacher. So in first year, these students do exactly the same broad, balanced first year course as people who are going on to do a BSc degree, as distinct from a BSc Ed. You can see there on the slide that we have four entry routes, CK402, CK404, CK406 and CK408. We do no education modules in first year. The reason we don't do the education modules in first year is to allow flexibility. Because sometimes students, when they begin the teaching placement in second year, they realise teaching is not for them. When we were setting up the course initially, we discussed it with some of our colleagues in other universities and they told us that sometimes students find when they're in the course, they don't like teaching and then they have difficulty getting out of it. Whereas in UCC, it's simple. They simply move sideways into the BSc in second year if they've changed their mind about a career in teaching or when they start their teaching placement, they realise that teaching isn't for them. All students in first year take physics and chemistry and biology to satisfy the teaching council requirements. In second year then, the students formally register for the course and they follow one of the three routes. They either go into the physics stream or the chemistry stream or the biology stream. In second year, they do 30 credits of their specialist subject, either physics or chemistry or biology and they do 30 credits of education. They come to me each week and I do a 15 credit module introducing science education to them and they're also out in local schools for a period of something like 10 weeks where they're teaching uh, usually first years and sometimes higher. We have this front loaded in the first term so that they fit in the 10 weeks around their normal BSc activities. In other words, they fit in the 10 weeks, they go out into schools during their half days or they might have a morning free or they go out to classes. Because all the schools are within commuting distance of UCC, there's no problem getting access for the students. The great strength of the programme from my point of view is that in second year, we see the students each day. They're in here with me. So if they encounter any problems during their teaching practice, they're in here in our Eureka Centre. Or I'll be talking to you in a moment about that. And you can see there, I just had, took a few photographs there one day, and where they were demonstrating some lessons to their fellow students. So we use this sort of spiral curriculum going right throughout the four years. The important point I would say about it is that we maintain close contact with the students. In third year, the structure is very similar to that of second year. Students continue on in their specialist stream. They do 30 credits of their specialist stream. They take another module in science education with me and they have school placement again in third year. That takes place in the second term again in local schools and it's structured to fit in with our own timetable here in UCC. Sometimes the students bring in their own pupils to visit the Eureka Centre and give them a little treat and again that's good that we have this close collaboration with our students, with our teachers, our mentor teachers and with the school principals. In fourth year then they do entirely education modules. In fourth year, they do the foundation studies, as you can see there, things like philosophy, history of education, psychology, sociology, and so on. And they also do extended placement. Now, I'm very proud of our school placement because it has worked very well. 
The students are in school each morning and they come in to us each afternoon for lectures and practical sessions. We do a lot of hands-on practical work with the students. In fact, this is one of the great strengths that we have excellent facilities here in UCC for the teachers. These are some of our third year students from last year. We succeed in having a nice uh, gender balance and all of these students that you see there now in front of you are now in their fourth year of the BSc Ed. When they go into fourth year, we share some lectures with the PDE students. So hence we had no problem in getting recognition because we already had these modules up and running for the PDE. Some of you may recognise Dr. Sean Pitt there, whom I invited back. He was one of my former lecturers in UCC, and he was absolutely brilliant. Uh, now, what facilities do we have? We are very fortunate that we have state-of-the-art school science education laboratories transplanted into UCC. If you look there at the photograph at the top left hand corner, you will see Professor Patrick Fitzpatrick, the Head of College of Science, and on his left is Professor David Waddington, one of the people, he's the Professor of Science Education, now retired, he helped us to set up the BSc Ed originally, and he was our external examiner for many years. You will see there the students involved in various activities. We bring in master teachers to give master classes to them. And the man that you see there in the bottom right hand corner is John Lucy, who recently retired, but he, is, he used to be in charge of training of biology teachers for the entire country. So we have a great team. Our student teachers join us each month for the monthly meeting of the Irish Science Teachers Association. And there we see some of our student teachers demonstrating some projects that they have done to the Cork branch of the ISTA related to coursework B activities for junior certificate. We are very fortunate that we have achieved international recognition by the International Council of Associations for Science Education. And you see there Professor Jack Holbrook, immediate past president of ICASE, presenting a plaque to Professor Patrick Fitzpatrick is we submitted our courses for accreditation. They were analysed, studied. We are closely cooperating with the uh, NAP, with the what they used to be called the SLSS, now they're called the PDST, the Professional Development uh, Association for Professional Development. And we have very fortunately been accredited by ITS. We are one of just five institutions in the world which have this accreditation. So we are very fortunate indeed that our quality of CPD courses run in collaboration with the Irish Science Teachers Association and in collaboration with the Professional Development Service for Teachers has gained this international recognition. Some students often ask me, what about recognition to teach a second science subject? Under the new model, the consecutive model for uh, teacher education and the concurrent model for teacher education, it is not possible to get a uh, recognition for two subjects for a level 8 degree. If someone comes here to do, say, a BSc degree, straight BSc, no education in either physics or chemistry or biology, you cannot get a degree in both chemistry and biology, or you cannot get a degree in both physics and biology, because they're level 8 degrees, and in fourth year, there's 100% specialisation in the specific degree. If you look at the concurrent model, where they do both education and science together, again, it's impossible to obtain recognition to teach two leaving such subjects. In fact, it would be most extraordinary if someone who has spent four years doing the consecutive model, four year honours physics degree, followed by two years PDE, if they're recognised to teach one subject, and then someone in a four year concurrent degree were recognised to teach two subjects. So the uh, teaching council has at last brought law and order. With their specialist subjects, our 
students have no problem in getting jobs. We've been very fortunate. Now our numbers have always been small, but of course they will increase because we now have the biology student coming in. But for example, there were two jobs for teachers of leaving South Chemistry here in Cork advertised during the summer and both of those jobs went to graduates from the BSc Ed uh, degree that we have here. So how, do one, how does one obtain a second teaching subject? We run a master's degree in science education. This is part time. It has proved very popular with teachers. Many teachers just take it as part of their own CPD and some teachers take it in order to get to up to the 60 ECTS credits in modules in either physics or chemistry or biology. And a word of advice before I leave you. I was quite surprised last week when I was giving orientation to students from disadvantaged schools and I asked them to fill out a form listing their leaving cert subjects. And I was really so sad to see that so many of them had only one science subject to leaving cert, mainly biology. Those students are now doubly disadvantaged because they are starting subjects like physics and chemistry from scratch. That's very tough. So my advice to any student who is thinking of going on to do a science or science related subject would be make sure you do two science subjects at leaving certain level so that at least you'll be able to devote your time in first year and if possible do at least one of the physical sciences because starting the scratch is tough going. We're very fortunate as well, we have lots of, these are our Masters in Science Education students at both primary level, we have a stream at primary teachers and also at secondary stream and we're involved in various international research too through the Profiles project. Time doesn't permit me to give you any further information. You should be getting today in my absence a summary sheet, uh, one A4 page back to back summarising all the key points about the BSc Ed and on the back of it is a list of every module that the students will be studying. They'll get these when they come to open days and when they meet me. I'm always delighted to hear from career guidance teachers. Feel free to give me an email or ring me on my mobile. I tend to be out a lot visiting schools in the morning and lecturing in the afternoon so it can be hard enough to get hold of me. Give me a ring at lunchtime or any time after six when things quiet down and I'd be delighted to speak to you. I also, I'd be delighted to speak to any of your pupils who want to contact me for further information. So, thank you all very much for your kind attention. I appreciate that very much and uh, God bless you all and keep up your good work as guidance counsellors. It's so important. Thank you all very much.